My name is Deron Chavis, urban farmer, community activist, and food justice advocate. Join me and my comrades as we talk resiliency, community, social justice, and why black space matters. I'm Deron Chavis and welcome to Black Space Matters. Uh, I'm here with Daryl Frazier. Why don't you tell the little people a little bit about yourself? Who is Daryl Frazier, you okay. know, and what kind of work do you do here in the city? I'm a licensed clinical social worker, um, social worker by profession. And I guess what I would say is I've been able to occupy a variety of different roles as a social worker. So yeah, currently a professor at VCU School of Social Work right behind us. I am a licensed clinical social worker, so I do practice. I do do uh, counseling and therapy. Mentor to students. Uh, former president of the Richmond Association of Black Social Workers. Social worker by profession, but I run the gamut in terms of a lot of the different things that I do. Yeah. So yeah. tell us a little bit about uh, that this this space of uh, black social work, because I feel like that ties directly into like the theme of you know, Black Space Matters right. and like the necessity for like spaces for people of African ancestry to heal and grow. What is the Richmond Association of Black Social Workers? So when I first got into the field of social work, so I got my undergraduate in psychology, master's in social work. Mm -hmm. My first year in the social work program here at VCU, um, I got introduced to the National Association of Black Social Workers. Wow. We're a social work organization, but we try to address issues in the black community. Mm -hmm. So it started in 1968. Wow. I like to say that they're the original Black Lives Matter. So mm -hmm. think about that time, the civil rights movement going on. Right. The black social workers all across the United States who had never met each other were going mm -hmm. to different uh, conferences. Mm -hmm. And they were challenging the, the social work organizations at the time to actually address issues in the black community. Mm -hmm probably about a month after King was killed, mm. they decided they were at a particular conference and they had did a few protests, walked out, and they ended up walking across the street in San Francisco to this particular church and decided to form their own organization. Wow. So that's how Black Social Workers came about. Mm. But I, I joined about 2002, 2003. Mm. Fast forward to today, you know, I was the president of the Richmond Association of Black Social Workers in one of my colleagues from LA mm -hmm. saw like a lot of the work that we were doing in Richmond. He yeah. was like, I really like the work that you all are doing in Richmond. Mm -hmm. He said, Daryl, I got a piece of property. Mm -hmm. I would like you all to do a community garden if you wish, wow. if you want to. Boom. First person I called was you, right? <laughs> right? Because, you know, I didn't know anything about it, but I thought this was a great opportunity for us to actually curate a space for um, uh, gardening because I also followed you. But uh, I thought this was a good opportunity, not just for myself to get involved, but to also bring the black social workers along. Very nice, very nice. The work that we've been doing over the last eight to 10 months has lived in this dialogue about race, food justice, climate justice, and things right. like that, right? How does the, the theme of resiliency tie into the work that you do as a, as a black social worker I like that you asked that question because um, as a social worker, we are taught and trained in what we call the biopsychosocial spiritual perspective. So treating the whole person, right? And for me, the way I look at this idea of resiliency, the idea of the black experience, particularly in America, um, our, our experience is all about resilience. Overcoming the circumstances in spite of. In spite of the challenges, um, uh, the beauty, seeing the beauty in spite of the pain, right? Sometimes, you know, we try to compartmentalize, you know, what we experience as, as black people. Um, some of the, the, uh, the oppression and some of the, the racism and not some of it, all of it, right? It, we can't erase it from our experience. When I sit here and reflect even on, like, you know, the garden, my parents, they're from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, growing up in New York, my dad did this in my backyard. Wow. You know, we grew tomatoes, cucumbers, mm -hmm. just yeah. everything. Right, right. And right, somewhere right. along the lines and along the way, we got away from that. Yeah, right. 
And uh, this is kind of bringing me back to that. Like even my grandmother, like, mm. you know, if we were ever sick, my grandmother would go to the back and cut some mint. Mm. You know, she would put something together. Right, right, right. And, right, uh, right, you know, right. it would make us feel better. So mm -hmm. we've gotten away from going to the garden, going to the backyard, mm -hmm. to going to the drugstore. Right. Mm -hmm. So in terms of resiliency, um, I think, like I said, it's, it's baked into the cake. Yeah, right, right, right. You talked about going to a uh, conference. Talk a little bit about the need for those types of spaces in terms of doing work explicitly for communities of color. Like, what, what did that give you a taste of yeah. that correlates with this idea of Black Space Matters? You know, we talk about wearing a mask a lot, right? Sometimes we gotta wear the mask of, okay, like, or, or being able to have that dual consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how I talk when I'm around my, my at home mm -hmm. and I'm around, like, my family is different from when I go out in public. Mm -hmm. And, like, going to the Black Social Work Conference, I didn't feel like I had to put on anything. I took the, the mask came off. Mm -hmm. And you see people throughout the, throughout the conference wearing African garb. Daishiki, so, so on and so forth. That was my first time ever putting on a daishiki. Mm -hmm. But going to the Black Social Work Conference and going to Harambe and seeing everybody dressed in African garb, me for the first time putting it on and mm -hmm. seeing myself, like it fit, it fit. It didn't just fit my body, it fit my soul. Those spaces are important to agree with your soul, mm -hmm. right? I don't have to be anybody else. Mm -hmm. So black spaces do matter, right? Because you know, there's a lot of times we gotta assimilate just to survive. That's really a survival tactic. We could be our fully, our full selves, unapologetic. You know, Carter G. Woodson talks about agency, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So when, you, when you're in a space like this, mm -hmm. you see all the possibilities. Mm -hmm. We can feed ourselves and make money mm -hmm. off of this to, to sustain ourselves. And I'm not talking about making millions of dollars, but just to survive, right? right, right? Black spaces matter in a lot of different ways, yeah, spiritually, sure. physically. Uh, tell us a little bit about this whole like green space kind of element, you know, because it's like social workers who are, who are doing gardening. Like help us understand it, the, the connection. We decided to name it the healing garden. Mm. Working with your hands can be healing. Mm. Like a lot of us will do therapy, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people, um, like my wife, she gardens, mm -hmm. right? She's a nurse. Mm -hmm. But when she comes home in the morning, just going out and water her, water her garden, or if I go out and I water the garden, mm -hmm. like it, it is a space of reflection and healing. And you come in and you just, everything, like whatever problem you thought you had feels better. Uh, we said, said before we even do anything with it, let's talk to the community. So we did that, mm -hmm. right? When I say the community, we spoke to the people in the neighborhood mm -hmm. and we spoke to you. Mm -hmm. As we started to work, the neighborhood would come out. Mm -hmm. There were neighbors who didn't talk to neighbors mm. that are now talking to neighbors. Wow. I learned about even the community that the property is on, wow. right? So there's some history there wow. in that being a black space. Wow. And people were throwing trash, right, right, beer right, bottles right, and right, 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 soda cans. Mm -hmm. Now that we've cleared that space, that's no longer happening, right? Uh, people, uh, they, when, they, when, when they see us in the neighborhood, they come by and they come in and engage and talk. That is social work, because social work is about not just what we do with individuals, but what we do with communities. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> you know, going into communities and they lack green space. Right. Going into communities, they lack access to healthy foods. Right. Going into communities and they don't have the social cohesion, right, that, that is necessary for healthy communities to be vibrant. Where does mental health fit into all of that? I would say all of those factors that you talked about contributes to your mental health. If you're eating the right foods, it's going to have an impact on how you feel and how you're able to think. Mm -hmm. If you're able to um, de-stress, like for example, going in and actually putting your hands in soil, right? That could help with stress. Mm -hmm. You know, you need, you need those things. Yeah, nice. Well, Daryl, man, I, I can't thank you enough for coming to share with us today. Uh, this is Black Space Matters. Uh, make sure y'all tune in next week. Uh, we'll have some more guests. We're talking about resiliency, talking about Richmond race. We're talking about the need for black space for all of us, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, family. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. You, man. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>